Hi, my name is Walter van den Houten. I'm 32 years old, senior software engineer at Tecaris, and I enjoy long walks on the beach. Hi, my name is Conrad Pfeffer. I'm one of the founders of Tecaris and currently one of the CEOs. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm a software developer and software architect. I am Mohammed Ahmed. I am uh, working with uh, Tikaris, working on this project for reinsurance products. Hi, um, I'm Anu. I'm um, a software engineer in Tikaris since three years now. Um, and I'm a lot uh, focused on uh, Asia development, web application development, and uh, well, all our development process going through Git repositories and therefore. We are working with pull requests. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a senior software engineer at Take Cars. <laughs> Would you reject a pull request because it does not run on your local machine? Sure. Um, yes, I would. That's the question, actually, if you want actually to make run a pull request on your machine, does it make sense? Do you have the infrastructure for that? Or do you trust the, the, the code which is written enough in order not to make it run on the machine? I wouldn't, therefore, reject it if it doesn't run on my machine because I wouldn't make it run uh, ultimately on my machine. It's a good question. Um, it, it really depends on whether I have uh, my environment set up correctly and whether I can trust the pull request itself. If it is a pull request that's about um, scripts or something that I can validate in other ways, even though it doesn't run on my machine, that would be okay. Yeah, in my opinion, um, you should never um, accept a pull request if you are not able to run it on, on your test machine. No, uh, it could be a problem with my local machine. I have to check first with the developer and I also have to take a look at the code itself. Maybe the code can tell me a lot. Maybe it's really something with my machine, not with, uh, with the implementation itself. So yeah, need a deep investigation. How many files should be touched in a perfect pull request? <laughs> Is there such a thing as a perfect pull request? Uh, I wouldn't judge that on the, on the amount of files, basically. I would more judge that on what does the pull request bring to your application. Uh, if you have, it depends if you have a pull request for an entire functionality, then it may impact uh, a couple of files uh, because you modified the interface, because uh, you modified uh, not, not only the behavior of one specific class. So it can have a wide impact on the application, even if the functionality you try to implement is rather small. Hmm. I think there is no, no specific number. It highly depends on the pull request and the feature we are uh, working on. Um, I believe if it's something to do with refactoring for uh, uh, a feature that's being used everywhere, then probably I will maybe touch a hundred files. It depends on uh, how deep it is. So there is no specific answer, it just depends on the pull request. But it depends also on um, the scope of what, of what the pull request does. So, yeah. That's a difficult question. I think it depends a little bit on the team and on the team experience. But um, I personally think um, around 10 to 15 files, it shouldn't be more. It really depends on what kind of pull request it is. If you're doing huge refactorings, then usually if, uh, if it only touches a few things, then it's probably not that, that you refactored everything. Uh, if it, anything that, that fits to the feature or the, or the, the task that you're doing, it, a, a good pull request is probably what between 10 and 30 files or something if it's just something small. If you're doing huge rework, it's more. Oh, good question. As much as it makes sense. Who decides in the end, the pull request submitter or the reviewer? 
that's always a topic of, of discussion. In the project I was working for, um, actually the, the developer who provided the pull request decided whether he wanted to accept the review comments or not. I would say the team. Or at least if the team cannot find an answer, you should have in, at least an architect or an, an dev lead or at least an existing rule which should decide about go or no go. I think it's a bit of both, like uh, both of them need to reach an agreement what should be changed and in what scope and also if uh, another pull request should be uh, like another, another, let's say, backlog item or another task should be implemented with a different pull request. So both of them need to agree on what uh, to accept or want not. Um, I think they should decide together because if there is one guy who would decline it, then it should not be accepted. Uh, it should always be the reviewers because the person who writes it or creates the pull request uh, are the ones that, I mean, you wouldn't kill your own baby, right? Both, I would say. Uh, you, if, if you have a, a feedback on a pull request and uh, if you don't necessarily agree with this back, basically how you're, are you going to solve this, uh, this conflict between you and the reviewer? Uh, it's all a matter of trade-offs in the end. Can you approve your own pull request? Well, that's a tricky question, but it depends on the pull request. Let's say if I just change uh, something in a document or a change a word or change uh, add a dot or something like that, like something to do with syntax, uh, like, I'm sorry, not syntax, something to do with uh, typos or something, yes, I think I can approve my own pull request. I can, but I should not. <laughs> now, um, if there's a rule you should not, then you should not do it. But in case of some bugs, hot fixes, and no team availability or something like this, you have to react, then you have to react. Yeah. But it's the total exception. Hmm. Me personally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. Uh, if, if you are doing uh, pair programming and it would take more time for the other person to go to his computer in order to, to approve it, then uh, maybe not. Like, uh, maybe yes, maybe it's okay. But uh, then at least write in a comment that it's been approved that by somebody else, uh, and preferably which person, so that it at least can be tracked. You should avoid it, but there could be a situation where you have to and you should minimize these situations? Technically, yes. Um, should you do it? I'm not sure. Uh, wh why would you even use pull request in this case, except for tracking the, the, the changes you made? It doesn't have any benefit to approve your own pull request. Thank you. That's it. OK. Now it's time for product placement. Oh. Adelholzner Wasser, naturell. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Very good. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks.